Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Where, as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Happy Sunday. I'm your host, Mike Harrison. Happy to be with you this morning. I hope everybody is doing well out there. It's a real foggy, foggy day here in Dallas, Fort Worth, and all the news guys are in a tizzy. They're predicting large hail late this evening. I just uh, hope it doesn't hit any of us. So hope they're wrong. Anyway, today's show, I'm going to go, I'm going to review real estate equations, jargon, acronyms. These are these are all things that real estate investors need to know. There's a ton of them out there. Obviously, I won't get to everyone on today's show. But the bottom line is real estate investing, the math is fairly simple, okay? In fact, our investments just boil down to nothing more than a mathematical equation, right? We've got our standards. We've got the returns we're expecting. Does it meet those returns? Yes or no? Do the math? No. Move on to the next one. But sometimes the buzzwords, the calculations may be confusing. So I hope to clear some of that up this morning. Before I get to that, I know many of you out there may not be having a great week, okay? But I need to remind you right here, right now, stop focusing on what you cannot control. This is very important. Stop focusing on what you cannot control. It will drive you crazy. You will never be successful if you get caught up in the tribal war of politics okay these two tribes hate each other and this will go on back and forth every few years the pendulum will swing hard right and then it'll swing hard left and then it'll swing hard right but what's going to happen as a result there is going to be massive opportunity massive opportunity there is money in confusion there is money in danger there is opportunity in danger in fact i believe the chinese have a symbol Their symbol for danger incorporates the symbol for opportunity, okay? They knew this 5,000 years ago. For me, for my family as a real estate investor, let me tell you what. We have had one of the best weeks ever, okay? Ever. Maybe the best week ever. Let Let me tell you what our week looked like. Well, first of all, I have a contract on one of my rental homes that I'm selling, a home I've owned for the last five years. The contract, it's in. It's locked, okay? We've already gone through the the option period. The contract's for 100000 more than what I paid for the home, okay? 100000 more. Not 100000 more than my down payment. No, it's 100000 more than what I paid for the home, okay? This will be a 240% return when this home sells. 240. Let me divide that by five here. Get my calculator out. That's a 48% return if you want to annualize it. Go do that in the stock market, my friends. And that doesn't include the cash flow. Doesn't include, I, I mean, the tax advantages. Just a wonderful deal. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing, I received two distribution checks this month from two of my passive apartment deals. Okay. Usually those will come the month or the second month after the quarter. So I'll get some more checks here in January, and we'll get some some checks in February. One of those apartment deals I invested in 2019. It's paid quarterly six months after the purchase. Okay, so you have a six-month seasoning period, and then it's paid every quarter after that. But the second check, this is what I'm excited about, is from an apartment community that I invested in in September of last year, right? September 2020. So one quarter of operations, boom, already a distribution check, all right? Normally you get six months, some of these deep value plays, you might get a year or two. But uh, these, 
immediate, all right? One quarter of operation. Very exciting, unexpected, very happy. It's fantastic. That's a great lead that runs that particular deal. Third thing that happened this week, I funded another passive investment. Okay, this is a super deal. Very excited of this. This deal is projecting the the PPM, the private placement memorandum. And we'll, there's one of those jargons, right? We'll talk more about that later in the show. It's projecting a, a refi three years after the first year of operation. So tentatively 2024. But when you look at this deal as a whole, again, very seasoned lead investor. Okay, this person's done this three dozen times maybe. We're looking at over 100% return, right? That's 2024. The decisions we're making today are affecting our life in 2024. All right? Get that snowball going, my friends. Get that cash flow snowball rolling. Fourth thing. Well, we completed a HELOC on my personal home this week. Yes, I'm taking debt equity out. Not only did I lower the rate on my mortgage to the tune of $3,000 annually, Okay, that's real money. 3000 annually savings. I pulled an additional $100,000 out. That 100000 is all going into multifamily deals, right? Now, I'm going to pay 3% on $100,000, but it's going to go into a deal. I just told you about it. My house returned 48% annually, right? I'm putting, I'm borrowing at 3%, and I'm putting it into deals that are going to return 20 30 40 50% annually. My friends, would you borrow at three to invest at 30? It's a no brainer, absolute no brainer. So my friends, what I want, what I want you to understand is the decisions I'm making today are what's going to make 2024 great. The decisions I made in 2018 are what's making 2021 great. Ignore the politics, get busy investing don't focus on what you can't control. The decisions you make this year will have a profound impact on your life for years to come. I want you to understand that. Cancel the noise. Move forward in a positive manner. Make great decisions. And down the road, it'll put a smile on your face. We'll be right back. My name is Mike Harrison. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. Welcome back to the show. Happy Sunday. Hope everybody's doing great out there. I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you listening more than you know. We're going to get into some real estate equations and acronyms. Every investor, every real estate investor needs to know. Why? The math is fairly simple, but sometimes the buzzwords, the jargon, the calculations, those can be confusing. I get emails asking as such. Okay? I know they can be confusing. They were confusing to me at first. If you have any questions, this is a live show. Call in. I'd love to hear from you. The number is 855 497 4335. 855 497 4335. Or if you don't want to call in, Send me an email. I love getting emails from you. Please reach out. I do respond personally. Ask Mike at L U I N C dot com. Ask Mike at L U I N C dot com. Okay, my friends. What we do, real estate investing, it is very simple. I'm telling you right now, anybody can do it. As you get older and wiser, I look at the stock market and I say, well, that's. That's complicated, really. You may not think it is because they're pulling money out of your check and it's on autopilot and it's going into a 401k and you think you're pretty savvy because you picked a, an aggressive growth fund and a value fund and a big cap and a small cap. That was me. But let me tell you what, unless you're an insider into Wall Street, you don't know what you're doing. 
It's complicated. It is legalized gambling. I had a I had an old poker player one time tell me. He said, "Harrison, if you're sitting at the table and you're playing poker, and you don't know who the sucker is, it's you." Okay. Now at the time that didn't make a heck of a lot of sense to me, but looking back at it in a comparative analysis, yeah, it's true. Warren Buffett I, w- I was reading a little bit today. He even said that the speculation and the frenzy that's going into the market right now is is unfounded. Okay, now I'm not I'm not trying to breathe fear in you. I'm a real estate investor. I don't play in that game. But in real estate, I, I will tell you one important fact: you are in control. You you're in control of your investing. Not Washington D.C. Not Wall Street. Okay, we invest in real estate to create passive reliable, stable income. I have a friend that 10 years ago, he and his wife, they were making a combined $65,000 a year. Every day, regular people married. I believe he's got uh, one kid. No, he's got two. Yeah, he's got two kids. Just everyday people, right? Salt of the earth, ex-military, hard workers, $65,000 a year. His house was paid off. He was a Dave Ramsey guy. But he stepped back and he said, this is insane. We are not getting ahead. We're not getting to where we want to be. We want to travel. We want to spend more time with our kids. We want we want to live, you know, a nice life, right? We don't need to be jet setters, but we want to do better than we're doing now. Well, he pulled money out of his house, just like I told you earlier I did pulled money out of his house and began investing. He bought one house. This was 10 years ago. And then he bought one small apartment complex. Okay, and he kept compounding and compounding and compounding and turning and turning and turning. 10 years later, and I'm telling you, my friends, anybody can do it. This guy doesn't have a PhD. He's not a mathematician. He's a great guy. $2 million in earnings last year. $2 million. Now, some of you are probably saying, ah, but the tax, the tax has probably broke his back. Yeah, let's talk about his taxes. He got $28,000 back. $28,000 back on $2 million in earnings. Is that something you would like to do? It's very, very simple. Anybody can do it, my friends. This gentleman doubles his money every two to three years. He has a net worth today over $8 million. But he started 10 years ago. Just like I told you, the investment that I got in this week, it's not about this week. It's not about next week. That's about 2024 for me. Now, it's going to cash flow throughout the process after six months. But it's a decision in 2021 to make 2024 great, right? Let's make 2024 great. All right, let's talk about some real estate equations. I've been teasing this for half the show already. Equations and acronyms. Again, real estate's simple, but again, sometimes the jargon gets in the way. I want to talk, the first one I want to talk about is called the 1% rule. And why do I want to talk about this? Well, I get calls and emails, people all the time will ask me, they'll go, Harrison, how do you know if a property is a good investment? So you can't go in and do an hour's worth of analysis on every opportunity you see. So you use a back of the napkin, quick, boom, just a a 10-second equation, and it's called the 1% rule. It's also called the rent-to-cost ratio, okay, rent-to-cost ratio. Again, it's back of the hand. It will tell you if a property needs further analysis, yes or no. No, move to the next one. Yes, dig in further. So what it says, the 1% rule is that the rent cost should be equivalent to at least 1% of the value of the home, not the purchase price, okay? That's different. We typically don't pay the full. Anyway, that's just how we do things. The 1% of the value, all right? So let's take a $140,000 home should rent for $1,400 a month, right? 1400 of 140000 is 1%. If it rents for sixteen hundred a month, that's one point one four percent. Anything north of that one is starting to look really nice. Anything south of that one is not so nice. But I'm not saying you you can't make money at point eight or point seven. 
there's a lot of deals that will. And I'm not saying you will make money at 1.14. I'm just saying when you start getting into that area, hey, this looks like an opportunity. Let's dig in a little further, okay? So let's let's break that $1,400 down. Um, we are in Texas. Every market is different, all right? Every market's different. Rents are different. Home values are different. But this is where I am. I'm in Dallas-Fort Worth. So of that 1400 about 25% of that goes to property taxes. We have high property taxes in Texas. It's lower in other states. About 4000 a month is what I'm figuring. Again, back of the hand. I haven't dug in. Back of the hand. Call it uh, $335 a month. Insurance, I'm going to figure we need to insure these homes, right? Six to eight percent. That's about a thousand a year. Mortgage and interest, right? The principal, that's going to be 15 to 30 percent of that $1,400. Again, real, this is back of the hand, real rough. So in this example, worst case, this home will cash flow just over $500 a month. I've got about $882 in expenses, cash flow $518. Again, my friends, back of the napkin, shoot from the hip analysis, right? A deal at 0.8 can make money. A deal at 1.2 can lose money. But this home, it, if it hits in that 1% rent-to-purchase ratio, right, the 1% rule or greater, take the time. Investigate further, okay? Investigate further. We're going to continue talking about real estate jargon and equations. My name is Mike Harrison. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Good morning. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Mike Harrison. Happy Sunday. I want to thank you for tuning in on the great WBAP 820 AM. If you'd like to call our show, our number is 855-497-4335, 855-497-4335. We'd love to hear from you. Or as always, send me an email, askmike at luinc.com. I'm here to help. We're talking real estate equations, acronyms, real estate simple. Sometimes the jargon makes it difficult, but the math's really simple. And today's show's a bit mechanical. I hope you find it useful, but if you miss any part of the show, just a reminder, you can go to YouTube. Everybody's on YouTube today. So are we. We have our own uh, our own YouTube channel, Lifestyles Unlimited. Go to YouTube, get in the search bar, Lifestyles Unlimited, boom, you'll find a ton of shows there. Podcast app. That I, I've been listening to this show and podcast, my gosh, at least... 10 years, maybe 11 years. Podcast app on your smartphone, put it on there, and you can listen while you're traveling or going on a walk or, or whatever. It's that convenient. Always, you can go to our website, lifestylesunlimited.com. Click on the radio button. Boom, you'll find all our shows there. There is a search bar way down at the bottom. If you scroll down there, you can put my name in or you can put a buzzword in or Dell Walmsley, Andy Webb. Al Gordon, any of us, and you can find us there. So, all right, we were talking about a back of the hand equation. I do get asked all the time, Harrison, how do you know if a property is a potentially good investment? And just real quick, shooting from the hip, you can use the 1% rule, right? It's also called the rent to cost ratio, and you're looking for it to be 1% or higher. Again, just quick, 10 seconds, right? It's a $150,000 house. Everything around it's renting for $1,500 or $1,600. Well, heck, this is probably going to be a decent investment. And then you can dig in and do some further investigation, right? 
So in that, I, w- I was telling you, you're going to put, uh, you got property tax, you got interest, you got the mortgage, you got uh, the insurance, and, and all that's probably going to come to 50, 60 percent, maybe 60, 70 percent of that total rent payment, right? So the rest, what is the rest? Well, that's our cash flow. That's the profit, right? Now, what if you utilize property management? Well, property management is going to take 7 to 10% of the total rent, right? So if it's $1,500 and a property manager requires 10%, that's another $150. But if you're playing with a total cash flow of 500 it's definitely in there, right? It just it brings your, your return, your cash on cash return to about $350 a month. I get asked this a lot. What about vacancy or turnover or CapEx? Some people accrue for that. I don't. I have one emergency fund, and it handles all my properties. I'm not saying, well, I need to set aside 100 a month for vacancy or, or what have you. Some people like to do that. I don't go that deep into it, okay? I don't plan on an emergency. I've got the money there. I don't plan on maintenance, Right, I had a guy on my show last week. He was talking once he fixed everything in in his apartment complex, his apartment community. His maintenance bill for materials one month was three dollars on an entire apartment community. Why was it only three dollars? Because he fixed everything. That's our model. We're not slumlords. Fix everything. Best product, best price. So that's why I'm not accruing for maintenance or what have you. Does it happen? Sure. All right. So you'll notice in the previous segment, I was talking about a $140,000 home. Our sweet spot in Dallas Fort Worth is, I'm going to say it's 80 to 180. We can debate that a little bit. Maybe it's all the way up to 220 now. I mean, things are accelerating. But our sweet spot's really in that 80 to 180. Again, 1% of 180,000 is 1,800 for rent. You're starting to kind of get up there, right? You know, when you start getting into 1800, 2000, 2500, you're getting away from the masses and you're getting into the classes. And I'm telling you, market to the masses, dine with the classes. Okay. That's um, the founder of Walmart came up with that. And he was right. So you want to have a product that is attractive to the majority of people out there. So that if your rents, say, 1100 to 1600, you're going to appeal most likely to at least 70, 80% of potential renters out there. Okay, so find the sweet spot in your town, in your community. I don't know what the sweet spot in Boise, Idaho is. I can help you figure that out, though. Okay, I know what the sweet spot in Dallas-Fort Worth, North Texas is. Lifestyles Unlimited can teach you how to figure that out. That's what we are. We're an educational and mentoring group. We teach people how to invest in real estate. Okay, next, um, continuing on with this 1%. This will tell us why expensive houses don't work. I I see this often. I'll I'll get somebody and they'll tell me, oh, yeah, I'm a real estate investor. Uh, We just bought a $500,000 home three miles from TCU in Fort Worth, and we're going to rent it out to college kids. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God. Gosh. Now, do people do this and they're in this segment? Do they make money? Yes. But it's not in our model. That 1% rule tells me you need to rent that home for five grand. And I can look on Zillow and I can see that they're not renting it for five grand. They're renting it for 3,500. That's not in that 1% equation. It's not cash flowing. If you've got that much money tied up in a home, it's not cash flowing with these double and triple digit returns. I just told you about my house. The appreciation alone, because of mortgage pay down and the appreciation of the home, is it's going to be a 240% return for me. So if you're in these big, expensive houses, everything is exponential. The property taxes is way higher. You might have three air conditioners on a $500,000 house. And those aren't $3,500 air conditioners. Those are $7,000 air conditioners. What about a hailstorm, right? They're talking about hail in Dallas-Fort Worth. A lot of people still have 2% deductibles, which I don't recommend in Dallas-Fort Worth. Why? Because it hails all the time. 2% of 500 grand, that's 10 grand. 
And people will say, well, I don't pay my deductible. Oh, you'll pay your deductible. You either pay it properly, legally, it's required, or it'll come out of the roof that gets put on there. Trust me, things get shorted. So get a 1% deductible, that's a side note. But these expensive houses, what happens? You get typically, let's say you have a really expensive house, and I looked online. I found houses that were six, seven hundred thousand dollars and the highest rent I was seeing was thirty five to thirty eight hundred dollars. They're not getting six grand and they're not getting set seven grand. The market just isn't going there. So stay in those sweet spots of houses where you can stick to that one percent ratio or greater. But in those big houses, what happens? Um, a lot of times the folks that rent those, they're transferring here because they're corporate people or they're in between. They're building a great house. They sold their other house quicker than they needed, so they want to rent a nice place. These are people with money. These are people with good credit. But what are they going to do after one year? And I was there. My first house, I did this prior to Lifestyles Unlimited. I had a very nice house, four bedroom, three bath, hardwood floors, crown molding, tile, brick. It was less than 10 years old. What happens after one year? They move out. They go buy their own house. And what do you lose on? You lose on the turnover, okay? So stick with those sweet spot homes. Utilize that 1% equation. Minimize that turnover and make some money. My name is Mike Harrison. We'll be back with the last segment. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Good morning. Welcome to the show. My name is Mike Harrison. If you're just now tuning in. I was dedicating this hour to talk uh, real estate jargon, equations, that sort of thing, and, and I know we've gotten caught up on the 1% rule, but I think the 1% rule is that important because it's a, a shoot-from-the-hip quick analysis, if you will, on whether a home is a potentially good investment. And we were talking, the more expensive a property is, the further away you get from that 1%. And that 1% really is the sweet spot. So a $150,000 house, if it could rent for $1,500, then it has the potential to be a really great deal, and you need further analysis. I'm not saying if you're at 0. 0.8, you won't make money, and I'm not saying you will make money if you're at 1.2. I'm just saying do that analysis. This helps, especially if you're looking at 20, 30, 40 properties, Real quick, in a week, you can. There's that many deals out there. So the higher the cost of the property, the further south of the 1% rule you get. It's counterintuitive. People think, if I have a $400,000 house, I'll rent it for three grand and make money. Not necessarily true, my friends. I think a lot of people get in trouble because they get caught up in, well, I want a, a uh, rental property to be nice. I want it to be a place that I would want to live. I tell you, we take a $150,000 house and we'll put granite countertops in it and hardwood floors and fix everything and paint it and modernize the property, landscape it, fix the roof, trick it out, so to speak. And it's super nice. It's a great place to live. Okay. It's just your return on your investment is that much greater when you find the sweet spot in your market. And and we like to stay in Dallas-Fort Worth. I'm going to say 80 to 180. A little different in San Antonio, a little different in Houston. So if, if what I'm saying sounds counterintuitive, it is. The cash-on-cash cash return on lower price properties is greater. I'm talking about back-of-the-hand analysis, 1% rule, right? Rent-to-cost ratio. We have software at Lifestyles Unlimited. It's called Quest. I'm going to take a moment and, and talk about Quest because let me say something. Quest may be the greatest piece of analytical real estate investing software I have ever used in my life. All right. So Damon, the creator, Damon, if you're listening, 
Now that I think about it, I, I want to get you on a show and I want to talk about Quest. I've never done that before. But if you're a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, you can subscribe to Quest. Okay, and it, it's basically a web app for evaluating single family and, and multifamily real estate investing. And it works all over the country. But I, I want to tell you a story. There was a home I was purchasing. I was a new member of Lifestyles Unlimited, fairly new. And this home, this wasn't brought to a to me from a realtor within Lifestyles Unlimited. It was brought basically by a friend, right? I told all my friends that were realtors, hey, I have some money. I am looking to buy rental property. And this property came across and I did the quest on it and it was a home run. Okay. I still own this home today, by the way, but I did my quest. It's like four pages printed out and I've got all my analysis right there. I knew what this property would rent for. I knew the value of this property. I knew how much I was putting in for repairs. I knew what my down payment was. I knew the percentages of my cash on cash return, whether I did a hard money close or whether I did a conventional loan. And if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, shoot me an email, Ask Mike at luinc.com. But listen to me. When I was standing out front of the property, I went and looked at it. I don't buy them sight unseen. A lot of people do. You can. I don't. When I went and looked at it, I was like, yeah, this home's perfect. And, then, and that's when my realtor said, well, they are taking best and final offer, whatever, at 5 p.m. today. And they have at least 20 offers, according to the selling realtor. Okay, yeah, I believe it. This house is a home run. I I bet you have at least 20 offers. I go, well, here's what I am going to do. And I I had this quest. I had this analysis. And the real estate agent who'd been in the business for much longer than I had for a number of years is like, what is that? And I said, oh, it's my my analysis on this property. And I, oh, okay. And really even didn't even understand what all I had there. Didn't even understand what hard money lending was or any of that. And this is a person that had, for every year I had been doing it, they had five years in in the business. But I said, look, here's what we're going to do. This house is, they're asking 141. We're going to offer 142. And and the realtor's like, no, no, no. You should go in at uh, 135. Because it needs repairs. It needs an AC. I said, no. We're going to offer 142. And then I want you to tell them I will close in 10 days or less. And also, I want to give them $5,000 in earnest money. That's how bad I want this house. Okay. That's how sure I was. And my realtor's looking at me like I was from Mars. No, you just $100 earnest money is all you need. No. Five grand. I'm closing in 10 days. I want $1,000 more than asking. Guess who got the house? I did. And I did it because as a young novice real estate investor, I had a quest analysis in my hand with all of the comps, the rental numbers, the purchase price, the closing cost, and the return, and the equity capture. Okay? I knew all this going in. It it is that amazing piece of software. So Quest will take that 1% back of the hand analysis that you have and will break it down. It's amazing. So let's get let's get at least a couple of acronyms in here before we close out the show. Cash on cash return. You'll see it as COC. Cash on cash return. That's the reason we invest. We don't invest for appreciation. You can go do that in the stock market. Don't buy a house and hope it appreciates. It might not. And then what? Then you're in trouble. So the reason we invest is cash on cash return. Because if a property doesn't cash flow, it's not an investment. If it doesn't cash flow, it's not an investment. People say, well, I buy land as an investment. Well, how much is that land paying you? Probably nothing. But if, I don't know, if you've got cattle on it or if you've got mineral rights that is actually giving you a check, then that that would qualify as an investment. But I don't put my money into something that doesn't cash flow. Cars. People will go, oh, I'm going to buy this old car, fix it up, and, and turn it. Okay. Again, that's more like a flip. That's more like speculation. Again, some people buy houses for the strict reason of, of appreciation. Again, that's gambling, stocks, gold. If it doesn't, cash flow, it's not an investment. So we want to calculate cash on cash return. If you buy a home out of pocket for 25000 and it rents for $1,500 a month, 
And after you play PITI, right? There's another acronym for you, PITI. Principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. And after you pay PITI, you have $500 a month left over. $500 a month times 12 is $6,000. Came out of pocket, $25,000. Follow me here. We're making $6,000 a month. That is a cash on cash return of 24%. That's a great deal. We look for cash on cash returns that are in the double digits. You're not doing that in the stock market. And that's tax free, by the way, if you're doing that properly. So cash on cash returns should be looked at annually and over the entire investment. Because if that home does appreciate and you start looking at it and then you start baking in your equity, your cash on cash return may begin to go down. And that's when you need to to take action. Let's look at another acronym. We got time. ARV. After repaired value. Why is that important? Well, for us, we buy homes that are distressed. They need to be repaired and updated. A hard money lender that we utilize will base that loan on ARV of the asset, and that equals less out of pocket for us. So if an after repaired value is a hundred and fifty thousand dollar home, but it's a beater and we're buying it for a hundred and twenty thousand dollar home, if we went conventional, we would only get a loan based on a hundred and twenty thousand and we would have to come out of pocket for the repair costs. Let's say there was twenty thousand in repair costs. So you'd buy it for one twenty, come out of pocket for an additional twenty to do the repairs. Well hard money lender will say, no this home is worth 150, and I'll loan you 75 percent of the 150. Whereas conventional again would only loan you 75 percent of the 120. So, are you picking up what I'm putting down? ARV after repaired value. So that was a fast show. I need to do another one on real estate jargon and equations. But real estate's easy. You just got to do the math. My name's Mike Harrison. Make it a great day. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.